welcome to the Ariel Show. Today I have a very special guest, the multi-talented Tim Cook is joining me today. And for those of you who are not stalking Tim on Twitter yet, Tim is <laughs> Icon for Hire's multi-brilliant genius manager. And he's been with us for four years now. And I thought it'd be great to have you on today, Tim, so you can share with our viewers, so many of them who want to be musicians themselves, the role of management, um, whether or not they should be looking for one, Maybe if you have any embarrassing stories about Icon for Hire you want to throw in there. <laughs> All that good stuff. So welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. It's, it's really nice, nice to see you. <laughs> Likewise, all the way from sunny LA. I hope it's sunny. I don't know if it is or not. Orange County. It's a little, it's, it's overcast today. I'm really having a struggle. Oh, yeah, you poor thing. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm in this tent protected from the elements. So, oh, you know. <laughs> that's great. Well, can you We're, share? Working out of a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so glamorous. Um, yeah. Can you share with the kids at home what like what does a band manager do like what are your job specs basically? Yeah, that's a great question. So I, I think the easiest way I've been able to describe being a manager is sort of like being the CEO of an artist's career. I'm like I want to be my own CEO, Tim. I want to be a CEO. <laughs> well, you honest? definitely are a CEO and a power woman for sure. Okay. But it's my responsibility to kind of listen to you, find out the things that are important to you. So when I first met you, for example. It wasn't just, I want to be a rock star in a band. It was, you had your fashion element, you had building the apparel, you had, well, I want to write a book, I want to speak. There was a lot of different things about you that were really interesting to me. Hmm. And I think that a lot of other managers that were meeting with you guys at the time were sort of seizing on, hey, she's a cute girl singing in this rock band and so forth. And what I saw in you was somebody who was multi-talented, had a lot of different things to say. And so we put in a, a system to help you do a lot of those things. You launched custom catastrophes, and now, of course, I'm reading the manuscript of your book. Uh, yeah. And I, I'm almost done with it. It's amazing. Everybody who wants to know about it, it's going to be incredible. Thank and, you. Um, yeah, no, it's really, truly amazing. And I'm not saying this because I'm doing this interview with you, because I, you know, you know, you know me, Ariel. I, I, I don't like a lot. <laughs> You're selective, <laughs> which is good. I'm, I'm very selective, yeah. but it's... Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the deal, and so you know, you you become the CEO of everyone's individual career, and you hope to put a system in place that will help them achieve the things that are important to them. So it's not one size fits all. You have to really like cater it to each specific artist. It's not one size fits all at all, and you know, and and with New Level, which is kind of my newest company um, versus what I had done in the past. Um, it's especially that way. Every conversation I have is a completely different space. And it's really fun for me because, you know, I can pick up the phone and call Kevin Lyman at Warp Tour, and then I can pick up the phone and call Jeff Krasno at Wanderlust Festival, which are completely Just different entities. names. There you go. <laughs> I'm not trying to drop names at all, but it's just, it's fun to be able to do that and to be in those different spaces. And it's, you know, creatively, it's just really fun. Good. And speaking of names, I forgot to even mention all the other awesome artists you've worked with, like POD, Blindside. Why don't you give us some of your other, you know, awesome clientele impressive lists here? Well, you know, Rob Bell and MC Yogi and Dominic Bally. And uh, I was also involved in that show, American Chopper. So I was on the show and I was managing Paul Jr. and and that was a really fun experience because we were doing a, a reality TV show on a science channel at the time, which is Discovery. Tim, uh, we should do a reality TV show. What do you think? Just I think we're doing. I think we're doing one right now. I think so too. <laughs> Excellent. Well, do you think um, an up and coming artist, like a young artist, needs to find a manager? Um, I would say definitely not an up and coming artist. I think it's really important to do kind of what you guys did as a band with Icon for Hire, which is. It's important for you to learn a lot of the things on your own, what it means to book a show, to haul in gear, to print your t-shirts, because when you hire a manager, then you have a good sense of whether the manager is adding value or not, because you know what you're doing. And I would encourage every band, if you haven't already done this, a lot of bands have, but if you haven't already done this, and he happens to be your, your lawyer, uh, Gene Solomon and Don Passman, but I would recommend everybody reads... Um, all You Need to Know About the Music Business by Don Passman. Excellent. I'll throw the link up. Really, yeah, really get familiar with that. Really understand like how, to, how, to, how a manager gets paid, a booking agent, a record label, things like that. It's really important. You know, The more information you have, the more empowered you'll be and the, more, uh, the less mistakes you'll make. Yeah. I wonder if artists watching this on the other side feel discouraged that they actually have to brush up on industry stuff because a lot of times we just want to be kind of creative and just following our elusive creativity around the world and just doing our thing. Um, so on the creativity side, 
what does your job look like? How do you foster creativity in your artists? If I were to come to you, which I never have, but if I were to be like, Tim, I can't write. I'm totally blocked right now. Like, what would you tell me to that? What would be your advice for that? Well, I've been in that space with you, and I've been in that space with other artists. Not when Um, I was creatively blocked, but when I was frustrated by the label. You're frustrated. Yeah. Yeah, especially with the label stuff. I mean, to me, I think it's important as a manager to protect an artist so they have the space to really get their voice out there. One of the things that's really disappointing for me as a, as a fan, as a manager so many times, is that by the time a song gets launched or a book gets launched or whatever gets launched creatively, there's been so many voices that have spoken into it. Mm-hmm. And the original intent that an artist has gets watered down. And I'm really excited about, like, for example, with, with Icon for Hire right now, like, there's nobody in your way. Your fans supported your Kickstarter. Your fans said, we want you guys to have your most authentic voice. Yeah. And so that's really, really incredible. And so when you hear the new Icon for Hire songs, and, you, and, you, and I read the book that I'm reading from you right now, um, there's, there's nothing in the way of what you're saying. It's just you. And it's really, really special. I, I told you the other day, like, I'm finding myself drifting off into your book. And I'm like, <laughs> I know you. But I'm learning so much about you, and it's really, really incredible. And, I, and I'm not just learning so much about you. I'm, I'm actually learning how to ma- navigate my own pain and my own struggles in my life by reading your book. Wow. And that couldn't happen if you had 12 people speaking into your process. So, exactly so, right. so one of the most important things to me is to protect artists. So, I mean, you know, I, I don't speak into the songs. I don't even give you a song title. I want nothing to do with other than to protect you to do what you do. Yes, and I remember that. Like one of my personal biggest creativity killers is just that image of we've talked about this: the fifty-year-old men in suits, the clueless, detached dudes sitting, you know, in their office in their high-rise somewhere. They have no idea what we're going for. They don't know our market. They don't know my creative soul, and they're trying to speak into our art and trying to make suggestions. And it's very frustrating. Yeah. And luckily, we were able to escape that toxic environment when we worked hard, got off that label. Now our fans are backing us and acting as our label for the time being, which is so powerful. So Mm. thanks for being with us with that. Um, Do you have any advice for like, are there any common mistakes that you see young artists making that you're like, oh God, don't do that. Like, that's not a good idea. Well, for sure. I mean, you know, it's it's really tough when you're an artist or a musician because, you know, by the very nature of you being an artist, you're very wide open. Mm, You put, you put your, you put yourself at a lot of risk. You're very vulnerable. And, um, and you have a young heart in the things that you're doing. And unfortunately, there are um, some unscrupulous people out there. You guys have gone through this experience. And other artists have too, where they take advantage of that innocence. And, and so I think the mistake I see often is artists, um, and I don't mean this as a criticism, I mean this because this we need artists. We need, we need that vulnerability. But a lot of times artists are very insecure they worked really hard in their garage or their bedroom and they, and they want to be able to show something to the world. And so they usually will make the mistake of signing with the wrong people too soon. Mm. And whether it's a label, a manager, a booking agent, whatever. And, you know, I would just encourage everybody who's listening to really believe in your talent and just keep holding out. If you can't attract your absolute top choice as a manager or a label or a booking agent or whoever it is, keep holding out. Wow, that's very powerful. I feel like our personal experience has been, and we've seen with so many other bands, that you forget that you like to be liked. Everyone wants to be wanted, and that feeling can be so good. Like, oh my God, finally somebody gets what we've been working so hard for on our own. They're willing to invest a solid 10 grand into this album. Let's give them everything that we've got versus maybe investing some goodwill on your own. And for us, that probably would have been wiser to just keep our heads down and keep doing what we were doing another couple of years, and then we wouldn't have had to sell our souls in order to put out our first album scripted. Yes, I agree 100%. Great. Well, my last question for you is what kind of got you into this business and like what is your favorite thing about being a manager, just in case there's anyone that might want to go to have your job one day and isn't quite sure if it's for them? (laughs) Well, my personal journey was I started promoting concerts when I was 17 years old and I was booking like punk and hardcore bands and metal bands and all that kind of stuff. And what I found happening over the years, I... I just personally love artists. You know, I think what I think what artists do, it's really important. So are it's you really, an artist? I'm not an artist You're at all. Not, but, okay. Um, I I realized a long time ago that I suck oh, at playing guitar. 
good self-awareness, so, Tim. Yeah, so it was good self-awareness, yes. <laughs> but, um, but what happened in reality was um, bands would come to my club and they would say, hey, can you look at our contract with our record label? Can you look at our booking agent contract or our management contract? And so I just started doing it to help my friends. Wow. And then that turned into people saying, we'd love for you to be our manager. And so I started managing some small bands and... And then, uh, and it was way back in the 90s or somewhere in the 90s where, um, way back, <laughs> uh, when Ariel was like two years old, <laughs> right, <preach. laughs> uh, that, you know, POD came along and different things like that, blindside and whatnot. And, um, and so I just took the opportunities of all the contracts I had read and the knowledge I was gaining to start becoming a manager. And so it was really a natural evolution for me. And it was all... And, I just love artists. I love working with them. I love helping them develop um, and, and get to their dreams. Mm. And, I, and, and also, more than just that, for me, I love protecting artists. I mean, you know from working with you guys, I'm really big on artists controlling the entire process, controlling the ownership of what they have. Yeah, freedom. Um, freedom. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, we, we're, as fans, we don't... We're not, we don't benefit when there's too many voices into an artistic process. No, nobody wins when it's some watered-down manufactured crap that, you know, no. is just like a dime a dozen. Well, that's really cool about you is that you've been doing this for a couple decades now, and you're still not yeah. crazy jaded, and you're just not in it for the money. You're not like this big asshole sitting up in your mansion just like ignoring all the little people. Like you are very day-to-day -day involved, and it sounds like you genuinely still have a heart in this. Like you still like doing it, which is awesome. I, I've been very lucky in that regard, and um, I do really, truly love it, and I still feel like I have a young heart. I'm much older now, but I do feel like I have a young heart, yeah. and um, so thank you for saying that, but yeah, that's very much the way it feels for me right now. Awesome. So if you're watching at home, you shouldn't get into a job that you're not going to be able to live with and love and thrive in for years to come, so don't do something stupid just because your mom wants you to, so you sleep better at night. Do something that lights you up, that like makes you feel alive every day, that you can be proud of and like sleep good at night over. Yes. All right. Tim, this is great. Thanks for coming on and joining us today from the hotel. Thanks for having me. It's wonderful to see you. <laughs> Likewise. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Don't forget to check out Patreon. That's what runs the Ariel Show right here. I love you guys, and I'll see you next week. Bye.